In this tutorial I want to show you how to install Backtrack into a virtual machine using VirtualBox and to do that without using the optical drive so not taking the ISO and burning it to an optical disk but to just be able to install it directly from the ISO file that you download so here I have a folder called Backtrack and in this I have downloaded the Backtrack software from their website and I have extracted that uh, zip file and so I have the ISO file and then a text file that comes along with the extraction. So normally we'll take the ISO file and burn that to an optical drive uh, to an optical disk and so we have a DVD and we'll take that DVD and then install it in the optical drive and so on. But you don't have to do that. You can install it directly from the ISO download. Let me show you how to do that. Here in my virtual box I have several that are already set up and I already have one backtrack that's uh, set up but let's just create a new one. So I'll start by clicking new and I'm going to call this, since I already have one installed I have to give this a different name so I'll just call this backtrack2 and I want to make sure that it is set to Linux and, and I'll just set it to Linux 2.6 for this uh, test here. We'll click on next. Now I'm going to give this more memory and this is going to depend upon your local host, the computer on which you are doing this. Uh, my computer has got lots of memory so I'm just going to run this up to about a gigabyte of memory, 1024, because when you go through the installation process then it takes a lot of memory. It takes a long time to do this and so the more memory the little bit faster it will go. And you can come back and decrease this memory allocation later. Click next. I'm going to go and accept the default here for the hard drive. I can ignore this screen since I'm not going to be using any of those. Click Next. I want to make sure it's dynamic, dynamically allocated space. Now for my hard drive space it tells me 8 gigabytes. I nearly always just double that because I want to make sure I don't run into a space problem later and I know that 16 gigs is plenty and again my host computer has got lots of storage space and so I, I can do this with no problem. Create. Now we have the VirtualBox instance set up here but it's not yet configured, not installed. So what I want to do is make sure that this is selected here and then I'm going to come up to settings and I want to change some settings here. I want to come to uh, storage first of all and under storage I want to click here where it says empty. I want to come over to the CD DVD and I'm not going to use the optical drive so I'm going to click here on the the icon here of the drive itself and see it gives us lots of different uh, options things that I've done before but I'm just going to choose a virtual CD so I'll open the backtrack folder that I have on my desktop and there is the ISO file I can simply click OK or open now it tells me that I'm going to get that ISO file here as or instead of the optical drive that I normally would have used so I'm going to go ahead and just set this up. I want to make sure though there's one other thing that needs to be done on my network settings. I want to, you know, for every instance of, of a virtual device you can have up to four network cards, virtual network cards. So this is the adapter one card. I want to make sure it's set to NAT and if you ever have any problems you can come here to advanced and you can choose from a list of various network cards that uh, might work with your system. I'm just going to allow the default card here to accept for this one but this is the one for NAT and I'm going to make sure that's on adapter 1 and then on adapter 2 I'm going to go ahead and enable this and I want to tell this to communicate with my host adapter. So then under advanced I've got to select a network card and it cannot be the one that was used for the first card. So I'm going to select a different one here, T-Server. If you find something that's, that doesn't work, you can simply come back in and change this later. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I have two ports set up for this. So it should be ready to run. I can click Start and it gives me this screen. I'm going to hit Enter. And then I want it to go ahead and uh, boot to default. I have to scroll here to get this screen to show up for me. 
when you start doing the installation process you're going to come to this prompt here that says in red it says boot at uh, BT for backtrack you're going to type start X so S T S T A R T X S T A R T X and then enter that actually starts the backtrack program uh, running inside of this virtual machine but it's not installed it's just running so I'm going to click here to install and double click and then we're going to walk through a regular Linux installation here English I'm going to click forward I will select my time zone and forward I'm going to accept the keyboard that it has detected and then here you may get worried because it's asking you about what you want to format and it's going to warn you that if you try to uh, use this process that it's going to overwrite everything on your hard drive. You have to understand that this is talking about only that space allocation. Earlier I set it up as 18 gigabytes and right now I have 17.2 gigabytes available and I'm going to say erase and use the entire disk but it's talking only about this 17.2 this will not affect your host computer it only affects the space that you allocated for this so I click forward ready to install okay it's installed and so we restart and when it comes back up you'll come to a login this is a different login and it's uh, going to be the login is root r-o-o-t the password is root spell backwards so it's t-o-o-r brings us to start x and here we are with our installed backtrack